My video for May the 24th, 2018 is entitled, If Truth Sets Us Free, Why Are We Still Enslaved? The answer to that question should be obvious. We don't yet know the truth. Many think it can be found in religion. Others trust political structures. Some thought it was science or education. Still no freedom. We've been playing this game of life for a very, very long time in human history. And we are still enslaved in and by the money fraud. Not even the supposed RV, currency revaluation, will set us free. Although it might be a step in that direction if honest people can finally access wealth. Of course, honesty is a rare commodity, especially among those claiming to be our rulers. I don't know about you folks, but I don't like the idea of being ruled. I do like the idea of a leadership that recognizes its responsibility is to serve. And you can't serve by lying. You can only serve by telling the truth and being honest. Now, look around the world. Do you see honesty? Do you see truth? I'm not talking about concepts. I'm talking about the way people actually live their lives. When I say people, I mean all of us. We live our lives enmeshed and entrapped by the money game. I realize that as I recognize how many people that I know that I know and have known personally through, throughout my life, and I've been one of them, who work at jobs that they don't really like, but they do it because they have to survive. And we've been told that the only way we can survive is if we have enough money. In fact, if we want to thrive, we must have a lot of money. That's the message that we're given. That's the examples that we are shown. Now, I watched a video just, in fact, uh, yesterday about Elvis. And it was really, it, it, it made me think that, a lot of what we've been told about Elvis is not necessarily true. The article purported to portray him, or did portray him, as an honest and a humble man, despite the fact that he was able to gain tremendous wealth. And he loved to give to other people. He gave away, I don't know how many cars in his life but lots of them, many of them Cadillacs, not all of them, but he gave people that he encountered gifts, sometimes very expensive gifts. He shared his wealth. Leaders in our world do not share their wealth. They are paid, in fact, to keep their wealth to themselves. Now. In the article about Elvis, many famous people, including politicians, praised him for his humbleness. And, and including, I'm not going to name names, but there were some names on there that, I mean, I really thought he recognized Elvis's humility. We all recognized Elvis's talent. He was a tremendous singer. He had a tremendous range. Some say three octaves. I heard, I've heard him sing bass and I've heard him sing tenor notes and hit the highs and the lows. Uh, but in any case, folks, that's not what I'm really talking about. I'm not, this isn't about Elvis. It's about the concept that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And as someone added, but first it'll piss you off. And the piss off part is that those that have claimed to be leaders or more precisely rulers, do not have the best interest of anyone at heart, not even God, as we are as portrayed in the Old Testament, especially, 
had humanity's best interest at heart. He was a jealous God. He, he commanded that you visit the iniquities of the fathers unto the children of the third and fourth generation. So you punish the kids for the sins of the father, not just the kids, but the grandkids and the great grandkids and the great grandkids, third and fourth generation. And it goes on further than that, obviously. We have been punished for sins that we supposedly committed. And some of us have had past life regressions where we recognize that, uh, or at least have the image placed in our consciousness that maybe we were involved in, in, in enslaving people and maybe even uh, ritual sacrifices. You know, I, I've had that personally. Is that true? I don't know if it's true or not, but I do know this. The earth is not free. Humanity is not free. When I say the earth, I mean humanity. We are not free. We have no place that we can look back on in our history where we were actually free. We've always been at each other's throats and we don't fight people if we know the truth, we're able to love. We don't see the differences, we see the similarities if we're able to love. Love builds bridges, not walls. Love unites, not separates. But we are a separated people. We are a people who have been divided and subdivided and subdivided again into cults and religions and, and movements and uh, all sorts of groupings that pit us against each other, preventing us from loving, which prevents us from moving into truth. Only when we begin to love one another, only be, when we begin to listen to the stories that we each have to share, only when we can stop the judgment of others, can we finally, finally reach a place of peace. Now, when I say judgment, I'm talking about condemnation. I'm not talking about recognizing when people are doing things that are detrimental to others and ultimately detrimental to themselves, whether they know it or not. But those crimes against humanity need to be exposed and reconciled. Now, punishment is the last resort. Reconciliation is the first re resort. We should try to help people that are lost understand what it means to be free, what it means to embrace the truth. What is the truth that we are interconnected? The light, the web of life is an interconnected web. No one is really separate from this web, nor can anyone or anything be separate from this web. It's the web of life. It contains all that is. And all that is, if it's going to be really uplifting and wonderful, there has to be truth. There has to be the knowledge that each of us is connected. That, that's, a, that's a ground knowledge. That's the base knowledge. It's the foundation on which everything else can come. We must know that we are connected. Because if we don't know that we're connected, if we think we're separate, we're going to abuse others. And that's a sin against life. It's a sin against humanity. I'd love to see the time come in my lifetime where we finally get it and where we finally are able to throw off the shackles of lies with which we've been bound since <laughs> Generations and generations past, multiple generations, eons. I think about these things, and I hope some of you are too, because the more of us that recognize the truth that I'm sharing, the faster we will be able to turn things around, where we can possibly even become free. Thank you for listening, and namaste.